So this is why it took Joe so long to start coming down to the Keys. We are stuck in traffic on this like one lane in, one lane out highway. Uh, we actually just got uh, a notification from our maps that if we turn down a single street, we could actually cut 45 minutes off of our journey. So heck yes, we are going to be turning down that street. Yeah, so we are heading down to Fiesta Key and we have 12 miles to go. That's it. And it is actually saying that that 12 miles is going to take an hour and 20 minutes to go. So before we left Miami, we actually stopped at one of our favorite gas stations for roller dogs because we knew the traffic was going to be pretty heavy. And so we wanted to stop and get some road food and our road food has changed a lot over the years. Now we are so excited about a roller dog. No, no carby snacks while we're road tripping. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we're away from home, you'll be alerted to it. So we made it down here to the Keys. We're here, and it is sunny and beautiful. Yeah, we're really excited about this trip. We haven't been to the Keys in, you know, a few months. I mean, yeah. the lacrosse season just keeps me super busy. And it's so exciting when lacrosse season is over. As much as I love lacrosse, it interferes with camping. Well, it is interesting that we can be so close to vacation mode because really nothing puts us in vacation mode like Key West but, or the Keys. Um, but we're so close to it, but still so far away because we can't take advantage of it. And we were especially far away today because we're staying at a place called Fiesta Key, uh, which is like literally five minutes south of Isle Morada. So you're only halfway to Key West from like when you get down, you know, into the Keys area. And this should only be about an hour and 40 minutes from our house. And I thought it was odd as we were leaving the house that it's like, it's going to take three and a half hours. Like that's how long it should take to get to Key West for right. us. And this is why I never really was into coming to the Keys before we had an RV because like the one road in, one road out, not my deal. And, you know, we hit that one batch where they're like doing road construction on a one lane road. And so it was like literally going to take an hour to go six miles. But we made it. I like the fact that we were patient. Yeah. It's another testimony to keto too, because you don't have to stop every, you know, 20 minutes on a road trip. And if you do expect delays, I can remember when we used to travel and we were, you know, trying to time things based on eating, yeah. trying, you know, trying to time things based on like when you were going to get to a certain restaurant or a pit stop or something like that. And now it, we don't have to worry about that. It's yeah. not like I am going to freak out if we can't stop and get, you know, food when I was expecting it. I did have my hot dog. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to go explore this campground. This is what I tend to call like a parking lot RV park, but that's okay. You know, by a parking lot RV park, I mean, it's just like space after space after space. There's no like campsite with trees and all that, but uh, it's only costing us $20 a night to park our RV here. That is hard to argue and with. And that's more than, that's less than half the price we've been staying at a state park, which is very difficult to get. I got to tell you what I'm really looking forward to is some access to like a pool. And I know that that sounds crazy, but we're planning on being in the ocean water a lot. Yep, and we're diving. you get really, you know, salty, like from head to toe and, and inside of you, you feel like my, my tongue, my guts, everything is now made of salt. So having a pool to kind of retreat to and just kind of soak in 
really does feel super nice, but it's been a while since we've had both this much of the keys and a pool at the same time. So we're gonna go explore the campground. Good morning. We are here in the Keys and uh, it is a gorgeous day. It is absolutely beautiful. We are super excited about this uh, spot that we're at. I mean, there's not a lot of people down here. Now, during the winter, very, very difficult to get into these places. Right. Um, but, you know, we're here. It's the middle of May and there's not a lot of people in the park and the weather is gorgeous and super excited. We're gonna be going some diving today. I'm excited and I'm starting the day off right with some coffee and now that I have discovered Keto Brains, I do not trust my first morning coffee to anything other than this creamer because there's only one first coffee right. each day. It's not my only coffee, but there's only one first taste of the morning and so I don't mess with it anymore. Mm. So I am starting off today because we're going to be doing diving. I've got a, an element in here. This is lemon lime. I actually meant to bring the relight and I forgot our packages of relight, the tubs. <laughs> and uh, so we always have in the RV, like the individual sticks of something. And for the RV, I like the individual sticks. Number one, it's super portable. Right. But number two, because we're not in the RV all the time and I like to leave it in there, less of a chance of that turning into a rock because of Florida humidity. Yeah. When you open up the tubs, for us, we have to use them within a couple of months. Otherwise, they start like turning into a rock. The moisture gets into them no matter what you do. Then you gotta use a grinder. So that's where I like the individual sticks. And then I'm also having some breakfast and I'm having some keto bread. This is the blueberry muffin one. I was one. gonna say it's perfect for breakfast, right? A blueberry muffin. Yeah. And I'm gonna eat about a third of the brick this morning for breakfast. We did not bring a lot of food with us. No, I bought like, I brought like carnivore crisps with us. Mm -hmm. We got some hot dogs, that sort of stuff, but. Chicken salad. Yeah, chicken salad that we made with tzatziki mm -hmm. sauce. Uh, so freaking good. But yeah, just packing light this time. You wanna take a walk? Yeah. So yeah, we didn't really bring a lot of food. My intention for this trip was no cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I don't want to set up the Blackstone. We really just want to uh, enjoy this week. So as of right now, the plan is an afternoon dive here. And uh, we're going to be going in 20 to 40 feet of water. 
on a reef. So perfect for Rachel. Yes. And that's why we're doing an afternoon. I like doing morning dives because Florida, the weather, it's unpredictable. Right. You can usually predict the mornings. Morning is usually the same, but as we get into the summertime, it rains every day in the afternoon. And so you never know what you're going to get with weather, but the boat that we're going out on, which is a company called Key Dives, uh, they do the deeper things in the morning and then they do the shallower reefs in the afternoon. Now, the morning reef is not really deep either. It's 60 feet in the sand, but Rachel's not comfortable going that deep yet. She will. She I doesn't will. think she will, but she will because 60 feet in the sand doesn't mean you're diving at 60 feet. That just means that's the deepest, but you're never actually in the sand. Right. And I will say what you just said about like morning versus afternoon, that'll preach, won't it? Because I feel like I need to do tough things in the morning, go deeper in the morning. Like I do better if I get some movement in, in the morning, if I'm trying to get like a certain amount of reading done, like my goals are, are, are really center stage in the morning. If mm -hmm. I wait, and see like, well, let's just see how the day takes me before I like get my resolve going, then I don't know what kind of rough weather we may encounter. So yeah. I think it's best to try to get things done like first thing in the morning if you can. Yeah, so even like regular exercise for me, if I don't do it when I get up, I don't wanna do it. Like I have no motivation at three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, wait a second. I didn't work out today, you know? <laughs> right. So it, for me, I want to get up, I want to get it done and then relax. But we want to enjoy ourselves. So we're going to do that dive this afternoon. Then tomorrow, I'm going to go on the morning dive. Rachel's going to probably come along as just a rider on the boat and enjoy a few hours out on the boat in, you know, the ocean. No regrets. And so that'll be really good. And then after that, we're going to come back over here to the campground and just relax. I mean, there's water here. There's a pool here. They have an on-site restaurant, which at first we didn't really care about. Now, I don't think we're going to go to the restaurant. We might check it out. But usually when you come to the Keys or when we go camping, we just want to do our own cooking. But what we learned yesterday was we are actually on Fiesta Key. And this is not a, a main key. No. You have to either go north to Isle Morada or you have to go south to Marathon. Both of which, well, Isle Morada is a little bit closer, except there's a bunch of construction going on. So as we saw when we were coming down, uh, it took like an hour to go 10 miles. Well, it's the same problem going north because they're working on the road and right. it's a one lane road. So you really got to go south. So that's 30 minutes. So. When you come here to Fiesta Key Resort, you wanna make sure you bring everything you need with you unless you don't mind doing a bunch of driving. Let's go take a look at the water. So as you can see, it is super beautiful here and you couldn't get any closer to the water. It actually feels like you could just like step out right on top of the water. There's actually a get in stairs over here so that you always have um, water and, and beach access. And this is just a really nice spot. And honestly, like uh, I, I'm, I'm totally cool with like eating here at the restaurant, just grabbing like a hamburger patty or something. You know, I think it's really nice and accessible and I can just relax. We can spend all of our energy relaxing because when we come to the Keys, I feel like Joe, I don't even want to cook. I just want to relax. It is absolutely beautiful here. There's lots of outdoor seating on this like beach that they've created. So it's really nice to have beautiful views as you're enjoying a drink or having a snack and then lots of beach chairs and access to a pool and a hot tub. So I feel like right here on the beach is the absolute best seat in the park. So much beautiful views of the ocean all around you just really really relaxing space i think you should go check out the water temperature since we're about to get in the water anyway let's do it okay so they have these great stairs back here but like be careful it's a little bit slippery um but this is really nice and they even have a swim platform over there it's a little bit cool this morning but with the hot sunshine i think that it's going to be the perfect balance okay so is it cool for a floridian or is it a cool for everybody it's a it's cool for a floridian yeah because i know that even diving up by our house in fort lauderdale 
the water temperature is currently 78 degrees. So this is going to have to be close to the same. So if you're not from Florida, 78 degrees is probably like, Bathtub water. yeah, but you know, from Florida, maybe not like this is wetsuit swimming for us. Okay, you were worried. How'd you do? I did I did really well. I was really glad that we had a dive guide. Not that I don't trust you, Joe, but it's always nice to just follow the fins. <laughs> did you see anything cool? I saw lots of, like more variety of parrotfish and there were a lot thicker schools of fish together. So if you enjoyed a particular like fish, it felt like there was 50 of them. You saw a cuda? I saw a barracuda and I saw a dark shark on the bottom underneath the rock, but I didn't freak out. And then a uh, glide group, lots of groupers. There were some Because really they nice know you can't watch. catch them here. It was really, really nice. I know. It, I feel like you see bigger things, the more safer they are from people fishing them. Okay, so you have to see this because this right here was why I was not going to get on the boat today. I saw this was my first like taste of, hey, what's it like in Isla Morada? So here's what it looks like where you get on the boat and I'm sure they'll come back around, but there's actually like a couple of sharks as well. But uh, there's one right out there. There he is right there. There's another one, but they're nurse sharks. They're not gonna bother you. But here's the thing. The reason that all of these fish are here is because there's a bait bin right there. It's kind of like Ginny right now when Peyton is sitting in the high chair and Ginny is just sitting right below there going, um, I know she's gonna drop some. She's well, that's what these something. guys are like. They're like, they're gonna feed me here. 
Yeah, there's a nice shark over there. There's one right there. You did it. I did. I got in the boat and I'm telling you, it was who we were surrounded with. So we had a really nice uh, dive guide with us that just made me feel extra safe so that I could follow him and hold Joe's hand at the same time. I love the fact that somebody else guiding makes you feel more comfortable than me well i needed you that makes me feel so well, confident in your love for me i needed you to hold my hands i actually needed two people not just the guide like you couldn't just be the guide i need you to also hold my hand so we actually went diving with a place called key dives and i honestly did not know this but the fee for the dive which was like $90, $95 or whatever. It includes your air, it right. includes weights, which most places, like even where I dive in Fort Lauderdale, they charge you extra. that's all extra. I mean, I always show up with air, but he was like, don't even bring tanks because we own our own tanks. So like, don't bring them. We're going to give you tanks. We're going to give you air, whatever kind of tanks you want. And it included a dive guide. So yeah. I feel like that's pretty good because, you know, that allowed me to get a lot of video. It allowed me to really focus on Rachel and we, and Rachel though like Hugh if he thought that she was close to his fins when she was learning how to dive like she literally like was getting kicked in the head by the dive guide and I was happy to be kicked in the head I want to be that close and it was interesting because he was like trying to point things out and she was like oh yeah I, I saw that already well and I think he was ex excited when I was like oh that's a lionfish it was like mm -hmm, it sure is but we saw uh, eel, we did see a nurse shark underneath a, a rock. But they're not going to bother you. Nice big giant lobster, big lionfish, so many different parrotfish. Yeah. Um, parrotfish are cool and there's so are. many different colors of them. I guess that's why they're called the parrotfish. Angelfish, just a lot of beautiful, beautiful fish today and nice, you know, clear blue water like you expect in the Keys. So we're going to go back now and uh, I think we're going to just relax. Rachel wants to go in the pool or in the hot tub. And then um, we're going diving, or I'm going diving again in the morning on the early boat. It's going to be on a deeper reef. Rachel's going to go as a ride along, uh, but she's not quite ready, like in her head, to go to 60 feet yet. But I'm you'll get there. Excited that I got from the truck to the boat today. Yeah. Rachel, what are you eating? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? nothing? Nothing, obviously. Nothing to see here. Is that good? Yeah, it is good. <laughs> Are you enjoying your vacation? Very relaxing. And more relaxation to come because I'm going to go get in the hot tub. So Rachel went down to the hot tub. I just uh, finished taking all of the videos off of my camera and put them onto the computer because I'm afraid I'm going to lose them. Plus, I ended up filling up the memory card. Evidently, I had some old dives on the memory card that I forgot to delete. So we lost like the last 10 minutes of the second dive, but that's okay. Um, we got plenty of footage. I'm not sure if we got the two lobsters that Rachel spotted. I'm hoping uh, we do, but I've got like two hours of footage because we had two almost hour long dives and I'm so proud of her. She did so well. Uh, when we first got to the dock, she saw all of those sharks and the tarpon that were swimming right around the docks. And she's like, I'm not getting in the water. I'm not getting in the water. I'm not getting in the water. And it can be scary, especially for a new diver. You know, you're not used to those big fish. You're not used to sharks. Don't realize that sharks don't bother you, especially nurse sharks. I mean, honestly, Calling a nurse shark a shark is like calling a cat a tiger. But when you hear the word shark, you think jaws. But sharks aren't like jaws. I mean, most sharks, they're just gonna leave you alone. They're afraid of us. You know, when you get in the water, they see all those bubbles. They're like, I want nothing to do with them. Um, but I know it is a scary thing, but she talked to Captain Bradley and a couple of other people and they're like, listen, you've been on the nursery in the Copenhagen up in Fort Lauderdale. It's the same thing. You're going to see the same kind of stuff. And it was funny. She said, what about hammerheads? And he's like, well, I can't promise you you're not going to see a hammerhead. But if you do, they're going to ignore you. They, they don't want to be bothered with you. And she got in the water. She did so well. Her buoyancy is really good. Uh, she's just doing really well as a diver. And I'm really, really proud of her. So I moved all the videos over. Now I'm going to head down and hang out with her at the pool. 
I've got a Redmond electrolyte. I found some in the cabinet and I was starting to get a couple of cramps at the end. So I know I'm a little low on my potassium. So I'm gonna drink one of these and uh, just hang out in the pool with her for a little while. Have you had enough of the ocean water? No, I haven't. You're just enjoying some chlorinated water for a while? I am gonna sit wherever I can sit the shallowest and not like be moved around by the current. We must really be Florida wusses because the, what, 89 degree pool is too cold and we're over here in the hot tub. Good morning. Good morning. It's a brand new day with some calm waters. It is flat calm out there. I think Rachel is not gonna have to worry about getting seasick. I am not gonna barf today. I mean, I took my Dramamine just in case because- But you didn't get seasick yesterday either. Boat, and it was a little bit rough at the end. Not yeah. at the beginning, but at the end. And the boat that we're on, like, it, no diesel smell. Like, no. we went out on the Goliath, like, you smell the diesel. It was interesting, too, because of the fact that their boat is, like, right before, you know, going out into open water versus having to go through the entire intercoastal system in order to get to the open water. So it was a much just different feel to the boat ride. It was really nice. We loved going on the boat yesterday with key dives. I gotta tell you, if you are in the Keys and you are interested in going scuba diving. Cheese for breakfast. <laughs> I had a coffee this morning with my uh, keto brains. It was so, so freaking good. Um, but yeah, if you're in the Keys, you definitely wanna check out key dives because it was like full service. Um, they set up everything for you if that's what what you want. I mean, we set up our own gear, but the fact that they carried everything to the boat was really yeah. nice. For people who are renting gear, they had the BCs already attached to the tanks. Everything was all set up, so you literally just went out and ready to go. Now, if you do that, make sure you check everything right. that's set up the way you want it. It's still your up. responsibility. It's still your responsibility. It's still your lifeline but just overall, everything they did for you. And when I look at, I go out on a boat up in Fort Lauderdale and I go out at least once a week. It's $85 plus tax for the boat trip. Right. That does not include if you need weights. It does not include your gear. It does not include- Air. Uh, air or a tank rental. Here, I think it's like $95, including tax, okay? It was like $95, I believe. And that includes your air, it includes a tank rental, it includes weights if you need it. It and does not include your gear, but it includes the other stuff. So like, even when I called up to say like, hey, I'm coming down, you know, will you refill my tanks after the first day? He's like, don't bring your tanks. He was like, we're gonna we're gonna provide tanks for you. It's actually easier because they just do all the tanks on it, which is good. That means I don't have to carry my tanks to the car. And it includes a dive guide. Yes. Which was my favorite part because you're traveling with basically an extra buddy. I was glad for my buddy Joe, but it was nice to also have a buddy who's been on this reef a lot yeah. and knows where to point out like cool stuff. And he had a slate with him and would point out different fish that i am buying one of those slates today for when i go yeah down it's like it's like an etch-a-sketch taste right right it's kind of cool but it was neat when we would see fish that we don't normally see and you know he would just point them out to us which was really nice and here's the thing even as somebody who is a dive guide and you know i'm out there with rachel and i'm we're enjoying ourselves but one of the things that when we're going out and especially we're, we do what's called an out and back. So an out and back is where you know, the boat drops you off and you're gonna swim out for a while and you have to come back to the boat as opposed to a drift dive. And I love drift diving. Right. Um, with an out and back, you you have to navigate. You have to, if, if we were not with a dive guide, you do have to like look at your compass. Okay, we're heading in this direction and then I need to know the direction I'm gonna go back. Now here, that water was so clear, like you could look up and, and you can see, see the, the boat. boat. I mean, it was at least a hundred feet of visibility. It was nice, even for me, with a dive guide, I didn't have to navigate, just follow him. Right, like, it was nice. Because he's been on that reef probably so many times. He knows exactly where the boat's moored. He knows 
okay, I'm going to go this way. He knows probably where he is at any given time on the reef because every time you're on the reef, you just start to memorize this pattern. It's like your house. When you first move into your house, you have to think about where is the bathroom? But after now, you're just there like, yeah, just like you can walk to the bathroom in the dark. Well, what was nice too is that like, you know, he's spacing out the time across the reef. So it's like, I didn't feel like we missed anything once we got back in the boat because I knew that he had taken us all the way around it, up and back and down, you know, all of the little nooks and crannies that we really needed to see. So that made me feel just really um, like it was a good and successful dive. So we are headed back out today. Uh, I'm gonna do a dive on the deeper reef. Captain said it's gonna be like a 60 feet in the sand. And I'm gonna help the boat. Are you gonna be a new dive master? No, but I can like pass things to people. I'm really good at, at carrying stuff and handing things to people. So yeah, we're gonna head out and then uh, later on today, I, we're gonna do something for dinner. I don't know what. We have in the RV, we have- Chicken, chicken salad. salad. We have hot dogs. We have some pouches of retort canned chili. Uh, or we may go out and grab some of that, uh, what is that place, Porky's down the street. Yeah, Remember? some pork belly. And get that pork belly. I don't know. We're going to see how we're going. Right now, I'm also having a Celsius. Are you ready? Yep. Are you going to catch me a lionfish? Hopefully. You're going to try your best? I'm going to try. Bring your best. It's dinner. If they're babies, I'm leaving them. Did you catch something? Oh, no. Don't let him back in the boat. Thank you. Did you see anything? Oh, uh, only one baby. I couldn't get him. Was it pretty out though? Yeah, very different reef. Very different layout than ours. Uh, it was um, It almost today. looks man-made. Really? Yeah, there's like these trenches, and you would think that somebody laid these trenches. Very different. What about the um, like garbage? You're you're not you pulled up like I pulled one, up one line, but I mean, again, when I'm in your Fort Fort Lauderdale, I never come up with more with less than four or five fishing lines, anchors, hooks. All right. Okay, guys. So we just finished up our dives, and I'm here with Mike, who is the owner, right? I'm the owner of Key Dives. The owner of Key Dives. Oh, and I was complimenting him about the reefs down here compared to Fort Lauderdale. I mean, you guys know I love to dive. I dive at least once a week out on all the reefs in Fort Lauderdale. And we have an amazing diversity of fish up in Fort Lauderdale. But the reef itself, you know, like the corals are kind of smaller. And I pull a lot of fishing line and garbage. And I was telling Mike how awesome it is down here because there's really not much garbage. I, in fact, I've seen in two days four dives, nice one fishing dives. line. Like, and what's the deal with that? How come we don't have a lot of garbage down here on, on our reef down here? Yeah. Well, about four years ago, we decided to take up arms. And we got tired of seeing all that debris as well. So in the last four years, we removed, with the help of our divers, our recreational divers, we removed over 20,000 pounds of debris. That's wow. anchors, that's chain, that's fishing line, that's fishing traps, uh, lobster traps, you name it. Um, Bizarre items from from uh, the, probably the weirdest item was a pink pink BB gun, the weirdest thing I ever seen. Um, but you name it, we have seen it and we have pulled it out. And our reefs are much better for it. And it's not an eyesore when you go swimming around on our reefs. Wow. So now you were also telling me about this program, this eye care program. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this. So we offer for recreational divers an opportunity to get involved in restoring our reefs. Despite what Joe said, um, our reefs are in dire need of help. We have lost over 95% of the corals on our reef. That means we have less than 5% remaining. That's not a lot, and it's not self-sustaining. So we've started a program in partnership with Melt Marine and Reef Renewal every week planting coral. A whole host of coral species that you can get involved with. All you have to do is reach out to iCare. Uh, the website is icareaboutcoral.org. Find out when a trip is happening, and right now we're running them every Saturday and then some additional trips during the week. Jump on, send an email, reach out, call, and we can get you on a boat planting coral and help us rebuild our reefs. Now, what does it cost to jump on that boat and help with planting the coral? The cost is the same as it is to make a two-tank dive. 
Wow. There's an additional $25 because we have to go through some training. We do a morning session. We'll teach you all about the history of our reef, what's happened, why, the science behind the corals and what we were doing to repair them. And it also gives you an opportunity to tour the onshore nursery run by Mount Marine here in Isla Mirada. So for an additional $25 over the cost of a regular two tank dive, you're out there planting coral. That $25 is a donation to our foundation, I care. Wow, that's amazing. And I do want to compliment you again, coming down here, Rachel's a newer diver. Okay, I'm, I'm working on becoming an instructor and, and I, I mean, I've got like 50 dives since January, but she's a newer diver and it was nice to go out with your shop yesterday with her and to have a guide. I mean, where I was able to kind of just focus on her and enjoy and not have to worry as much and, and not have to navigate. Mm -hmm. It was kind of nice to just have somebody go, hey, I'm going to get you back to the boat on this out and back. So I have to tell you guys, if you're coming down to the Keys, this is where you want to come. You want to come to Key Dives. We're not affiliated with them. We don't make any money off them. Hey, we got hooked up to them by Hugh and Missy, and I'm so glad we did because you guys have an amazing shop. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys enjoyed yourself. Hope to see you guys out on the reef. Will you smell very clean and fresh now, sir? I like the smell of salt water. I like the smell of salt water also, but I also like the smell of soap and smoked meats. And you didn't have any smoked meat, so we'll have to just settle for soap. So we are back from the dives. I went home. I took a shower, cleaned off all the salt water. We rinsed out all of our gear. And uh, what an amazing day, what an amazing dive. And I had so much fun. You had a chance to just hang out on the boat and talk to the captain for a That while. was really, really neat. It's amazing to me how small the diving world is. And it's always nice to meet somebody who grew up in Florida. He didn't grow up in South Florida. He grew up in like the Clearwater area and divided his time between here and the, the West Coast of the United States. Um, but just to, to know somebody that has been around Florida for as long as I have and have some of those memories of like, can you believe that they're building things west of 441? Like just, you know, just some of those conversations that we had was just so much fun and i really really enjoyed going out with captain bradley it was just a, a great experience yeah i mean you talk about a small world it turns out that captain bradley the captain there at key dives has actually worked boats with the people from the shop that i'm affiliated with and i mean talk about just a small world and i have to say like when you talk about like customer service the fact that he, re in the first time he meets you, he remembers your name. Like, I am horrible with that. Right. Like, I will remember your face forever. But names, I'm not good at that. I I'm need not to great. figure out ways to remember people's names. But literally, we met him in the shop yesterday. And by the time he got to the boat, he's like, hey, Rachel, hey, Joe all day long again today how you doing joe how you doing rachel but that was everybody on the boat everybody on not the just boat. us <laughs> and so that is just like really good customer service the way they took care of you I, I know we already said it but i i cannot say enough about i highly recommend key dives and and again if you're going a marathon and staying at like curry hammock or if you're going up and staying at john Pennicamp or any of the other RV resorts around here, it's worth it to take the ride to Isle Mirada and go out with them. Also, I'm used to, when I go out on a boat at South Florida diving up in Pompano Beach, it's like 30 to 45 minutes to get to the dive location because you gotta go down the intercoast, so you gotta yep. go under the bridge, then you gotta get out to the dive spot. Here, you are in the water within 15 minutes of that boat leaving the dock. I that, mean, that is incredible. That is nice. You almost don't have enough time to like get all of your gear on because like you don't want to just sit there in all of your gear because it's very heavy and it's hot. But yeah, you have to kind of like start getting dressed as soon as you leave the, the dock because you are ready to swim pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, so had a great time. Now we're going to head down to Marathon. Get some food. We're going to maybe do a little bit of shopping, see what's going on down there. I mean, we, we go down to Marathon all the time. We love Marathon. Uh, definitely going to look for some food to eat. Even though we have some food in the RV, 
we figure some out, fishies. you know, when in Rome, right? Yeah. Let's see what we can find down there. I think somebody also wants to go to Bell's Outlet because they have like one of the largest Bell's Outlets I've ever seen. That's how many, how old are you, Rachel? I am, I want to go on vacation to Bell's Outlet years old. So we're here at Porky's Bayside and this is definitely one of our very favorite places to eat here in the Keys. They've got great daily specials and I am particular fan of their fried pork belly. So we've got quite the feast here because this is all of the stuff that they have on happy hour. So believe it or not, all this food is gonna be less than 50 bucks. Yeah, and we have quite the variety. We've always liked appetizer food, even before keto, right? Because I liked a little bit of everything. So we've got chicken wings. Each of us had an order of chicken wings. Each of us have an order and a half of pork belly. We've got some beautiful uh, tuna, sashimi, and we've got some oysters. I know Rachel's not really eating oysters. She's gonna have one. I'm probably oh, you forgot about the shrimp. more of this, which is the peel and eat shrimp. Okay, I wanna get lucky tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna eat most of them, but we got six oysters. We're gonna put some hot sauce on there. A little bit, hit it with some extra Redmond. There's horseradish. Oh, I love horseradish, hold on. There you go. Now we're ready. It's just a texture issue. That's delicious though. Really good. That was flipping awesome. It was like a taste of everything. I'm that person that they built a buffet around because I want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And the fact that it was like chicken wings and oysters and shrimp and pork belly and tuna, like there was just something, every bite was delicious. Are you full? I'm full, but I'm not gonna like throw up, which I feel like is really good because we still have the rest of the day to enjoy. What are you doing? Getting some gum. Just kidding, getting fish food. You're gonna feed the fish? I am. Are you like five? Yes. You just spent like two days underwater. But look at these guys, look at how pretty. How often do you get to feed something that colorful? There's a reason they're hanging out here, you know. Yeah, I think they've learned, but you know what? For the same reason that all of those sharks and the tarpon were hanging out at the dock. Anybody bold enough to wear blue lipstick? Like you're my kind of fish. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go home either. I know you have to work tomorrow, like in person with Anthony. I like, have to help Anthony cut the you church. You can't virtually help him cut the church, so we have to physically be there. But it has been nice to be able to work on the road here in Keys. It has, and and that is definitely a blessing that we have. That so long as we have internet, yeah, and we have a house to stay in, which there's technically a house behind us. Um, we can get our work done. The problem with that is you have to have the discipline to do it because right. I just want to go back diving. Uh, honestly, we got done with the first dive yesterday where you did not dive and Captain uh, Bradley asked, hey, do you want to go out on the second dive? And I started thinking to myself, I would love to. Rachel's gear is in the back. The second dive or the second trip for the day is a shallow dive we could get two more dives into it. Yes, it's gonna cost us money, but- But you had a vlog to edit. I, I had to more look at like, yeah, like we have work to do. Like yeah. a, a, you can't just play. We're not at the point where we can just play. Well, and I think that that'll speak into our keto journey as well, because you do have to bring a certain amount of discipline, you know, to your life where you're like, I want to eat food that's fun, I enjoy fun eating, yeah. Um, but I also need to eat what is right for me. So I can't just lead with the funnest food. Like the funnest food for you is probably cheese. Like if, if you, if you are like, Hey, for the rest of your life, all you're eating is like grilled melty cheese. Like that's <laughs> like the, going to be the bulk of your diet. That sounds delicious. You would love that. It's the same thing for me. If I was just going to be eating a pound of nuts every single day, like I could absolutely do that. But we know that the lion's share of our food needs to be ruminant animals. Yeah. Right. And sometimes it's super exciting. Like if I'm eating picanha at a Brazilian steakhouse, like beef is the most exciting thing ever. 
Um, but sometimes when we're home and we're just having a hamburger patty for the millionth time, it may not be as fun, but I need to be disciplined enough to prioritize like what is the most important. So overall, this has been a good week and it really has been a good reminder of like why we worked so hard to get our health back. Because I know pre-keto, we wouldn't have had the energy to do the dives we had, to go in the pool, to walk around, and, and just explore everything that we did. Yeah, I, I would definitely echo that because we really enjoy our life, but I think what we enjoy the most of all is the stamina to live our life. Because I think there was always a craving on the inside of me for adventure, but I just couldn't like rock myself off the couch to go live that life. And I really just had enough energy to go to work and come home and not really even have energy for the conversations that we have now when we're, you know, on vacation, because at night we're not so exhausted from the day that we can't be present even in the evening. So I really enjoy that also. You never notice that every time we do a video, somebody starts doing landscaping. Always. Well, we're going to pack up the RV and we're going to head home. Tonight we have our live stream and I'm super excited about that. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos I have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent videos I'm going to put right over there. <laughs> Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we travel, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. bye.